very good morning <clears throat> my sincere apologies for not being with you last saturday but i had a very urgent commitment so now i promise that i'm going to be with you every saturday and those of you who are interested log in those of you who cannot do it at 11 o'clock on saturdays can always catch up later so we have this wonderful forum by which we connect to each other today's uh, topic came to my mind very very long ago you know when i had started my organization it was a one man show i didn't have any partners or any other you know people to uh, work uh, alongside with me of course uh, over a period of time i uh, developed staff you know uh, the staff grew in fact and the workload built up so there was a point when i felt that there's too much of administrative and accounts and those type of work which i felt that uh, you know i am not cut out to do i would rather have the freedom to do what i want to do and you know do this sort of thing like training and counseling and all that so i got hold of a old friend of mine uh, who had actually done his mba from uk and was working in multinational companies and all that and i had a very good uh, career graph and uh, he was wanting to come back to the hometown because they used to keep transferring him and things like that so i gave him an offer i said would you like to become the executive director and take complete charge i'll give you a free hand <clears throat> to run the organization the way you want and i that will give me some freedom he was happy he agreed and he joined and yes he had excellent managerial skills he was doing very well he was in fact resolving a lot of issues much better than i could have done and i was very happy with him the only thing that happened was that he seemed to be getting overloaded with work i was wondering earlier i was doing the work alone now there are two of us so actually he should have more time on the hand no why is it that he seems to be so overloaded we used to have lunch together at 1 o'clock slowly he started saying no no wait for 10 minutes wait for 20 minutes then he would call me on the intercom and uh, say no no you go ahead with lunch i'll be held up his wife who was also a friend of mine she started telling me that you know he's coming home later and later in the evenings we thought we'll come back uh, you know children are growing up and we'll be in our hometown and we'll have some nice family time together we are not getting that anyway what happened was that i realized that while he is a very efficient manager he gets too involved in whatever he does so he takes up a task and forgets that everything else exists and go so deep into it that by the time so many other things get lost one day i was at bombay airport and i picked up a nice small practical book just 80 pages which had given tips page by page on how to improve your time management in the flight itself i read it and i found it very practical and very useful i came and i gifted it to him i said start using these techniques i think it will be a great help to you i gave it to him and i forgot two three weeks went past one fine day i asked him did that book benefit you and uh, did you really find some useful uh, techniques which you can implement you can guess what he said no i have been too busy early i didn't get time to read the book and that was what made me think that people sometimes don't have the time to do time management so that's what made me come out with this topic today that very often people who are efficient people who are capable people who are intelligent lose out on certain things only because their time management is not appropriate and here i want to tell you one very very important thing that is that time is linear it cannot be brought back you cannot buy time however much money you have you cannot save time like a fixed deposit in the bank saying that when i need that time i will take it out and i will use the time you cannot stop the passage of time or slow down the passage of time among all the resources that we have this is the only one which is irreversible if i lose money somehow i can get back or build back my financial status my health goes back with all the efforts and with good doctors i can get back my health 
relationships go bad i can always build back relationships all the other important factors that we have in life can be retrieved time cannot be retrieved then comes a very important thing over the years whatever i have been you know exploring surveying researching on this concept of time or rather time management i have come to a very simple conclusion that is that time management is primarily time prioritization prioritizing time i'll give you a very simple uh, uh, example you have an old uncle whom you were very fond of as a child he used to take care of you he used to be very nice to you and then you grow up he lives a little far away and you know, you've not been meeting him much except maybe on formal occasions and things like that you have a very soft corner for him but you got busy in life and therefore you have not been able to give much attention and time to him you come to know that he is not keeping good health and you make up your mind no i must go and meet him he is such a favorite uncle of mine he has done so much for me when i was a child i think i must meet uh, uh, him when of course not today uh, today i'm very busy tomorrow i would have gone normally but uh, tomorrow i have got that uh, meeting and i have that thing to prepare no yeah, yeah. okay then when uh, anyway uh, weekend will be coming so i think i'll go on saturday this saturday something new has turned up and i've got a lot of work sunday i've got guests at home again monday onwards the same routine goes on no no this week i must go and meet him and if somebody asks you your uncle is not well did you go and meet him who oh, yes i want to meet him i definitely want to meet him but i'm just not getting the time yaar last few days i've been exceptionally busy that's why i have not been able to meet him okay then you get news that uncle is critical he may not last more than a day or two he is very sick you drop everything and you are there by his bedside how did you find the time suddenly meeting uncle became a priority which it was not earlier the same time the same schedule the same commitment everything is there but you did not prioritize it let me also share with you another real life uh, incident which had an impact on uh, uh, me when i first shifted to bangalore i had a lot of free time on my hand so i walked out of my office and roamed around here and there my office was in a different place at that time and i located that close by there was an orphanage i said in the afternoons after lunch when i have free time why don't i go there and spend some time and see if i can be of use to these uh, little children there i asked the secretary he was very happy he said yes 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 you must come you who uh, help out we'd like you to come but you know in real life what happened was every afternoon i would walk down to the place and the secretary and the manager and everybody would be busy running around today audit is going on tomorrow that uh, you know pump water pump has conked out so they are chasing the plumber some other day something else is happening some other day there's a board meeting going on so i would go roam around a nice open space hang around uh, there nothing to do and i would come back one day when i was walking in there was an old watchman an ex uh, army man uh, who was the security watchman there he was looking at me with a smile and he asked me in hindi kya saab aap roz idhar aate hain aapko kuch dusra kaam nahi hai kya so i was taken aback i said uh, nahi yaar i come uh, here because i have some free time and i want to see if i can help the orphans and uh, the children over uh, uh, here so he gave me a smile and he said theek hai jaiye so that struck me no there's something wrong so i came back to him and i said do you think i'm coming to the wrong place do you think i should not be coming here no sir i never said that please sir of course of course yes you are doing noble work you are volunteering for this thing do come i said no 
the comment that you made made me sit up and think there has to be something wrong. I said, I won't tell anybody, I promise. Please tell me, is there something wrong with the orphanage or the management? Are they corrupt people? That's why they don't want anybody outsider to come and interfere. Is, is it that you know they are inefficient or something? They've got some vested interests or something. He said, no, sir. They are very committed people. All the people who run this place are honest, incorruptible, and very, very committed to the orphanage. But, sir, he said, and mark his words, they are so committed to the orphanage that they have no time for the orphans. They are more interested, like I told you, in the water pump, in the audit, and in the meetings, and in this and that, all these things. But that human touch was what was missing. And that is when I realized again once more that time management is nothing but prioritizing the time. I'll give you just one more quick story. This is not my own, of course. You must have heard of it, many of you. It's about that uh, uh, boy who was asked to cut trees in the jungle. And he was told that for every tree that you cut, you'll get so much money. And he was very enthusiastic. And he started off. And he started cutting, let's say, 10 trees a day. And he was making very good money. Every morning, he would get up, immediately have his breakfast, get ready, have a bath, pick up his axe, carry his tiffin, and go running and start chopping. But he realized over a period of time that the number of trees that he was cutting started coming down. Nine trees, eight trees, seven trees. So same efficiency, the same uh, you know, commitment and motivation, the same time span, the same distance going from his house to the forest. Everything was the same, but this efficiency was coming down. And that was when somebody pointed out and said, you are so caught up with running to go and chop the trees that you have forgotten to sharpen the axe. The axe is getting blunt. And that is why, despite the same efforts, you're cutting less number of trees. And this, dear friends, is what I want to share with you. Please do not forget to sharpen your mental axe. That is what will ensure that you will be able to manage your time, however busy you are, whatever may be your responsibilities. There's a very simple technique how you can plan out. You know, there's that very nice uh, proverb which says, plan your work and work your plan. Some of us do plan our work, but we don't work our plan. Why does that happen? I made a small little presentation which... Uh, Anis has made for you. Let us look at it. There are four aspects to the uh, tasks that we have on hand. The first one is those which are most urgent and important. So you classify. First, pick up those which are urgent and important. The next category is of tasks which are Urgent, but not important. The third category is those which are not urgent, but they are important. Sometime or the other, they have to be done. And the fourth category is those which have to be done, but they are neither urgent nor important. So in a nutshell, if you look at it, look at this quadrangle of four boxes that we have made. That is, no, the four boxes, not procrastinate. Go back. The four uh, you know, categories that I told you right now, if you can make them into, take a piece of paper, draw, to a vertical line and a horizontal uh, line and put them into these four categories. The first would be urgent and important. The second would be urgent but not important. 
the third would be not urgent but important and the fourth would be not urgent not important but sometime or the other they have to be done if you can start glancing at that periodically and pushing this from this category to that pushing that from that category to this even removing something which is not no longer necessary adding something as and when it happens if you start putting all your tasks all your responsibilities all your duties into these four uh, tasks you will realize that you will be able to plan out your time much better than you know what you were doing uh, uh, earlier there's only one aspect to it which i want to caution you about when we are working our plan no the one thing that we forget is that murphy's law which says if something can go wrong it will i make up my mind today i must get up early i must go for a walk and then from there i will walk down to sanjay's place and i will buy that material which is needed then i will come back and then i will do this and that and i get up in the morning and i find there is pouring rain of all the days why today because today was the day i selected to go walking and complete my walk and do the shopping and meet that neighbor who is not well and come back and exactly on that day the rain starts so please remember if there is any possibility any loophole of something going wrong it will go wrong and that is why when you do time management i do this with uh, you know children who are facing exams i ask them how many days do you have for your uh, exam so supposing the person says i have got 30 days and i say okay how many chapters do you have in this uh, subject 10 so how many chapters will you read per day in order to be able to complete the whole portion sir if i read three chapters in 10 days and in 30 days uh, uh, you know i can complete the uh, whole uh, uh, thing no because out of those 30 days one day a huge lot of relatives and neighbors will walk in one day will be a festival one day you will fall sick one day you will not fall sick but you will feel too lazy and too demotivated you just like to take a break and get out and go and spend the day with friends so five days are gone so you cut short that five and come come back to 25 then what you do is keep another one or two in reserve because if i complete my portion i will have two more days to do this last minute review and check or even just relax so cut out those two days so now whatever you have to do you make it into 22 days and not 30 days that is the only way you will be able to complete the task and this doesn't apply only to students or studies it applies to any task anything any you are being set some goals you have some responsibilities you have to complete something before the vacation term starts anything like that okay then there's another uh, uh, thing you know people who find it very difficult uh, uh, to you know do things one of the reasons for that is this huge word called procrastination even pronouncing that word you know takes up so much time that you get bored and what is this thing called procrastination it is postponing an important task because of no reason there's no reason for doing it but yet you are doing it so how can you overcome procrastination make a list of activities which you postponed in the last few days when there was no compelling reason not to do them check out you will find yes i had to do that cleaning but then i kept postponing it yes i had to go and get my dental checkup done but i kept postponing it for no rhyme or reason for the only thing being that you procrastinated not today i'll do it tomorrow that type of thing 
if you start making a list and be aware of the amount you procrastinate, you will be able to get over it. And procrastination, remember, is a habit. Once that habit sets in of anything, it gets very difficult to remove. But you can slowly, slowly, slowly chop it off. From habit, chop off H. What remains? A bit still remains. Chop off the A. Bit remains. Chop off the B. It still remains. Then chop off the I, T and I remains. Which means I am going to do what I want to do. It's a slow, time-consuming, difficult exercise. But believe me, it's a transformation. It's not just a change. It brings you into a new world altogether once you can overcome procrastination. The other uh, uh, you know, aspect of this, which not many of us realize is, you must learn to do the boring tasks first. Whatever you find boring, you do that first. Then you will realize that you are free from that boring task. And get down to the tasks which are more of your interest. Right? Make it a determination. Yes, this is boring. Yeah, I have to go and meet that stupid fellow. I just don't like him. What to do? I have to meet him. Yeah, but okay. Maybe I'll do it tomorrow. Maybe when I'm going anyway, I think in the next two, three days, I have to go in that uh, direction for some other work. I'll combine that and I'll go. It won't be so bad. No. If it is a boring task, you don't like that fellow, you don't like that meeting, it's not going to be very pleasant. Go ahead and do it as fast as possible. That is what is important. You know, when we are faced with obstacles, when things are not going very uh, well, we have this habit of passing the buck. It's very interesting. If there is a delay due to a non-living thing, a mechanical thing, the computers are down, we find it easy to accept it. Let's say you go to an office where some work has to be done and you are standing at that counter and that gentleman tells you, sir, you have to wait. The computers are down. We are getting it done. As soon as it is done, I'll do your work. You accept it very calmly. But if you go to the same counter and the man says, I've been working since morning. I'm very tired. I'd like to have a cup of tea. I want to relax for a few minutes, have a cup of tea. Then I'll do your work. We get angry. It's your duty. You have to do it. What do you mean a cup of tea? Is this the time to have a cup of tea? You should have a fixed time, not during the time of the customers. So remember that we get very offended when it is involving people not when it involves non-living uh, things, which I think is blatantly unfair. If that person is telling you that I need a tea break, I think we should learn to be more accepting of that. And to be more accepting, the one important thing is to ensure that you don't get into that victim syndrome. Everybody is against me. See, there also this happened. As it is, I got caught up in the traffic and I'll reach here with very little time. And now this fellow is saying that he wants five minutes break. Now, what has that man got to do with your traffic jam, isn't it? In fact, there's a very interesting thing called the red light syndrome. If you go regularly from place A to place B and it takes you whatever 30 minutes to go. So you generally start 35, 40 minutes earlier. And in between, if there are some hurdles, there is some traffic jam, you still make it in time. Today, let us say you got delayed and you have started only 25 minutes before. Now you're trying to rush through. And you will realize that at every intersection, there is a red light. That's why it's called the red light syndrome. And you start fretting and fuming and you start getting so angry. 
the fact is that the red light occurs for the same time period as it does every day and at every rotation of the four sides of the intersection. But to you at that time, it looks as though every intersection that I'm going through, there's a stupid red light. So what is the answer? Accept it. Today I've left five minutes late. I might reach five or even 10 minutes late. Inform people, do whatever has to be uh, done. And you will realize that things are much, much, you know, smoother. One last point, and then I'll tell you a little bit about time wasters, and then we'll have our open uh, uh, house. Very happy to see my very dear friend, Dr. Sai Kumar from Chennai, professor of medicine. He's also joined us, and he has wished good morning. And good morning, not only to Dr. Sai, but to all the people who have said good morning. I want to convey good morning to you. I want to convey my best wishes to you for the coming festival. The Sera is on us and it's one of the most important festivals in the country. And I wish you all the very best on this auspicious occasion. At the same time, I also wish you for tomorrow, which I consider a very, very important festival, which is Gandhi Jayanti. I think we should celebrate Gandhi Jayanti with the same fervor as we celebrate our individual or our community festivals. Okay, so here I come to the time wasters. All of us have certain time wasters, whether we like it or not. I want you to please start listing out which are your time wasters. I told you about habits, certain habits. I can't let go of that. Yeah. Certain activities which I do which may or may not be very important or which could be squeezed together. But I keep getting into those activities and I don't even realize how badly they are affecting uh, me. People who use up your time with no productive output. So many times I have seen a person wants to convey to me that next Monday, can I see you at 11 o'clock? And I check my diary and I can say, yes, come at 11 o'clock next Monday. If it's a message, it takes me exactly 15 seconds to reply. Yes, come at 11 o'clock next Monday. But if the person makes a phone call, will he pick up the phone and say, good morning, Ali. Can I come next Monday at 11 o'clock to meet you? No, he doesn't do that. Hi, how was life? What's going on? Oh, very fine. Yeah, okay, what else? No, today did you see it was raining the whole throughout the night and early morning also it was raining. Yes, I know it was uh, raining. No, I was thinking, you know, today being Saturday, I was doing this, this, this. And Monday, actually, I am uh, quite free. And I was just thinking that, uh, you know, Monday instead of going, I had that particular work. But then I thought I'll take off on Monday. And I was just wondering whether in the morning, say, by 11, can I come and meet you? See how long he took my time. Learn to tell people to come to the point. Don't get involved in gossip and uh, things like that, which unnecessarily take away your time. So please be aware of each of these time wasters. We don't even realize unless we list them down. Leave margin for unexpected interruptions when making a timetable. That's what I told you, how I you know, uh, guide uh, students who are preparing for an exam. Unless you leave margins, you will not be able to fulfill your goals. These are very, very simple things. They are not rocket science as most of our Saturday interactions are. But the fact is, do I actually put it into practice? Unless and until I put it into practice, all these things have no meaning. Somewhere I'd request you, just jot down these one or two things here and there and start putting it into practice. Okay? So do I deserve sharp on time, my two-minute tea break? And Mira is here to make a couple of very important and very useful announcements, and then I'll be with you.
Good morning, everyone. So here we are today again. And um, like Ali was talking about time wasters, procrastination, and um, you know how do we make time for ourselves? What is important? What is not important? So handling many of these such problems and uh, you know understanding how to take this forward, especially with children, because children after the pandemic they've had so many repercussions. They've been online now. They don't want to go to school. They are throwing tantrums. Few of them didn't even go to school, and then suddenly they were asked to go to school. Few of them didn't even see the face of their college, and they still finished their 12th standard or PUC. And so much of social anxiety and time wasting because two years they had nothing to do. They were just at home. So we thought that at Team Banjara and at Banjara, we feel that enriching lives through empowerment being our motto. We thought that we would like to contribute to the society and to the children who again are the future of our country, of our families. And um, like, you know, tomorrow's even Gandhi Jayanti and even he fought for the future and the children of our country. In fact, it is also known as the International Day uh, for non-violence, okay, because he was a non-violent freedom fighter and he really worked resentlessly. He didn't procrastinate. So that is why we are enjoying our independence and we are enjoying this freedom that we have today. Coming back to um, what I was telling you is that we have the International Program in Child and Adolescent Development. It is an online course. Again, we have taken it internationally because we have many of our students who are, uh, you know, from different countries of the world. And uh, like I always say that, you know, emotions are same everywhere, irrespective of where you stay. And children have a lot of emotions that they would like to, you know, release and understand. And we as significant adults also need to understand them and from where they are coming since it is better to have happy children than broken adults. We are starting the course at the earliest. Admissions have begun. But the also thing is that we also have a lot of procedure, introspection and all before the course. So uh, our numbers are on the screen. You can call us. You can get in touch with us. You can also you know, email us. We at Banjara offer free counseling. So any kind of counseling is free at Banjara. Happy holidays, happy Dasara, and happy Gandhi Jayanti, and happy International Day of Nonviolence, too. Thank you. <coughs> that reminded uh, uh, me that uh, today also happens to be World Elders Day and we are celebrating it in Banjara. Anybody interested, you are welcome. 3.30 to 5.30. We have Dr. Dominic with us who has been heading the Department of Geriatric Medicine in Baptist Hospital. A young man very committed to the elders and their well-being and their welfare. I have seen excellent work being done by him over the years. So we've invited him and of course, how can a World Elders Day be without our great Ramaswamy? He's also with us and I'm there with uh, you. We are going to have a couple of hours, 3.30 to 5.30, a nice session in our training hall. Those of you who can make it, you're most uh, uh, welcome. Yes, Ms. says that a uh, topic I missed while doing DCS, very important uh, uh, topic. And it, I'm glad that you actually found the time now, to come into time management, Ms., you're always welcome. And we continue with all these small, small uh, uh, topics uh, every now and uh, uh, then. And other than the good mornings that have come, I am waiting for, uh, uh, you know, uh, some more interesting questions or comments. I just thought I'll share with you one very nice uh, incident. There was this uh, uh, boy. Uh, who was made to sit outside the CEO's cabin and whenever he would ring the bell, he had to go inside, get him a glass of water, get him tea or take some file or bring some, call somebody or whatever it is. That was his task. But throughout the day, he was hardly occupied. He was just sitting uh, only waiting for the bell to ring. 
So what they did was that uh, the you know when the sheets of paper would come for distribution to the departments, they told him you make them into packets of one thousand, and see that they are given back so that they can be distributed. Now this poor fellow used to sit down and start counting. 104, 109, 204, 9, 217, 262. By the time, boss would ring the bell and he would forget what he has counted and he would go in and come back and he would start again from one. That is when somebody came out with a simple idea. Start counting 100 and putting them aside. And when you have 10 piles of 100 each, make it into a packet of 1000 uh, sheets. So even if the boss calls you, the buzzer rings, you would have lost count of 20, 30, 50 uh, sheets, not more than uh, uh, that. The moral of this story is break up your important tasks into small ones. That's a very, very important and a very effective way of time management. Very often we find we see a huge, massive task ahead of us. To give you an example, somebody comes and says that I've lost my job and I have to now struggle, find out. I'm not very confident how I will get a job. I've been working for so many years, this, this, this. I tell him, let us break it down into very small tasks. Can the first goal be making a CV? Done. Second goal, showing it to some HR expert who will approve or show some changes done third is uploading on whichever websites etc done so you see how one two three tasks are getting fulfilled in no time and that gives him the confidence that when he actually has to face the interview or get into a job he goes with much more confidence right okay navina says at times we get deviated from the main task we are doing could be an emergency or sometimes some non-important task. How to make up for that when the deadline has to be met? Starting with first thing, Namina, when you have a deadline, as I told you, Murphy's Law, keep beforehand some time for this emergency. Emergencies will come whether you like it or not. So like I said, if I have 10 days to complete the task, I should plan it out in such a way that I can complete it in eight days. Because definitely one day there will be an emergency, one day I'll be feeling very sick or tired or something like that will uh, uh, happen. So leave that margin. Okay. Supposing despite all your efforts, you have still not been able to, you know, complete. Too many things happen which disrupted and because of uh, that, you find that, no, I don't think I'll be able to reach this deadline. That is when you go back to the first chart that I showed you. Which are the tasks which are urgent and important? Which are urgent but not important? Those which are not important but urgent? And those which are neither important nor urgent? So the fourth category start knocking them down because you are already running against time. You have to complete the deadline. So start off in knocking off the fourth one. Then go on to not urgent and important. They are important, but they are not urgent. So I will do it after this deadline is over. Then go to the third one, then go to the fourth one. You will be able to make up for it. Divya is asking how to teach children about time management. <laughs> The first step, sorry to say it, is how good a role model you are as far as time management is concerned. I go to parent-teacher meetings. I'm invited to give a talk. And I am told that 10 o'clock is the meeting. And I go there and I insist with the principal that if we have given a time of 10, we will start at 10. No, sir, some of the parents are still coming. Shall we wait for a little while? No, please. We have given a commitment of 10. We will start at 10. I start off. 10, 5, 10, 10, 10, 15, 10, 20. People are still walking in. I allow all of them to come in. And then I talk about this role modeling. I ask them, 
do any of you have problem in let's say getting your child ready to go to school in the morning to complete the homework on time to study properly beforehand before the last minute mugging has to be done are you having difficulties yes we have difficulties my kid is very very lazy doesn't come up to it at all then i tell them that did you realize that today you were late for a meeting did you realize what sort of a role model were you somehow the child will know that you reached late and the child will say one day you were called for the parent teacher meeting and you reached there late every day you expect me to be on, in school on time you getting the picture it's a very small thing but we have to do something about uh, uh, it ha ah, i have a very interesting question from dr sai what when we have too much time on hand that's very interesting you know that you know people sometimes they worry more when they don't have anything to do i have seen people who have say recently been retired after being very very active or they have taken a gap <coughs> sorry excuse me something like that is uh, um, happening and they find a lot of time on their hands and they get thoroughly restless they get involved in unwanted activities and they lose more time than what should have uh, gone so again i come back to the same thing list out everything that you have to do it could be something very simple like i am a spiritual person i want to spend some time in prayers or learning some you know uh, reading some scriptures or whatever uh, uh, it is put that down i may be wanting to you know take care of a pet or even stray dogs i may be wanting to visit a few neighbors of mine who are seniors or who do, are little homebound and they don't uh, go out i may be wanting to go to the library or some such thing and do some reading uh, uh, over there i may be wanting to go to a park and get some fresh air list out all the possible <coughs> excuse me list out all the possible uh, uh, things and put them into those four categories if there's nothing in the first category that is urgent and important doesn't matter there will always be something in the second or the third uh, uh, category a lot the time see that you don't get carried away sometimes when we have too much time and we take up some activity we get so involved in it because somewhere at the back of our mind that feeling is there that now i don't have anything else to do or you know i don't have any other commitment so i start going a little too deep into uh, certain uh, things for example i have seen some elders you know they get involved with a grandchild and they get so involved with the grandchild that they don't have time for anything else and it may come to a point where the grandchild actually starts resenting that you are hanging around too much with uh, uh, me i love you i want to spend time with you but not so much time that you are boring me all the time you are suffocating me people who keep you know talking all the time about themselves these are the things that we have to be a little careful uh, uh, about right julie has a good uh, question how to handle when some ad hoc activities or new tasks are given by the manager himself when there are things already planned what i would do at the first stage is depending on the type of manager that i have sit down and talk it over with him show him that this is what i had planned out monday this is what i'm going to do tuesday and wednesday are holidays because of the sera so next week we are going to be missing out on two uh, days immediately after that thursday and friday i have this 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 uh, commitment and then the weekend will be uh, coming by friday evening i have to submit this report to head office whatever uh, it is so do you think sir that you can get this done from somewhere else or we can postpone this new task that you're giving me for whatever reason if the boss is not very accommodative and says no you have to fit in this uh, thing then you ask yourself if it is very important and if it is the way that you know people want uh, things to be uh, uh, done and he's uh, after all my boss see how you can squeeze in again i go back to the same thing start pushing off those 
which are not urgent and not important and also those which are not urgent but important so i can postpone those fitness and then come back to do whatever i uh, wanted to do right okay navina says i am always before time while i have to reach somewhere whether any pleasure outing or to attend classes or sessions, but my child always postpone thing for the last minute. And I realized that my hubby does everything in the last minute. So he picked it up from there. So how to teach my child? Can you make an attempt, Navina, to first teach your hubby? Try. No harm in it. Explain to him the advantages of better time management, that his stress will come down. He will be more relaxed if he does things on hand. Give him a lot of positive strokes whenever he feels this. And with father and son, both of them make it like a game. Is father ready on time or is son ready on time? Who got ready uh, first? The person who is ready, reward them in some way or the other. Okay, you got ready 10 minutes in advance. I'm making a nice hot cup of coffee and giving uh, you. So like that, there should be some incentive also for the person whose habit is become very, very bad about uh, doing things uh, on time. But if you have the patience and the perseverance, slowly you can bring about a change and do it together with the father and son throughout. Anisa has a question. How do we stay motivated and not procrastinate to complete our important uh, task? You have uh, used the word uh, important, Anis. So when you say it is important, uh, important according to whom? Supposing it is important to your boss or your organization, but not to you, ask yourself that question. Am I giving it sufficient importance or not? Because I told you, you no know, time management is basically time prioritization. What do I give priority to? That is one. Second thing is, when you are asking how to remain motivated, please remember that very basic thing in anything that we do, that is, what is in it for me? W-I-I-I-F-M. What is it in it for me? Mera kya? Mujhe kya? If you can find something beneficial to yourself, it could be that that will get you an increment. It could be that it will get you some praise from your colleagues. It could be just that self-satisfaction that, yeah, it was such a difficult task, but I did it those who can whenever you can give yourself some reward your motivation level automatically goes up sometimes it's even worth going and asking for appreciation so you go to your colleague or your boss and say this was very difficult but since you said it is important i have completed this what is your opinion about it do you think i've done a good job then nothing wrong in fishing for compliments i believe when it is actual and true and the person says, yes, you've done a good job. That gives you again some sense of motivation, right? Mess says, uh, how do we deal with friends or family who are always late and you feel your time is not valued when you're always uh, uh, punctual? Realign your timing to uh, uh, them. When you know that these people are not going to come on the, uh, time, you tell them 6 o'clock and you turn up at uh, uh, 6.30. And tell them also that earlier I used to be very punctual. But, you know, when I realized that I, every time I'm punctual, nothing really happens. And I'm waiting for you people. So I have also decided I had some urgent work. I thought I'll complete that and come. Let them, you know, get a taste of their own medicine, as they say. That is one. The other thing is that if you have to respect them and you have to be there on time, think of tasks to do. In that gap between the time when you were supposed to start something and the time they actually turn up. So if they come 10 minutes late or 30 minutes late, think of some activity from that four quadrants I told you and ask yourself, why don't I sit and do this work? I tell this also to a lot of people who have to attend innumerable meetings where there's nothing going on or the boss in between takes a phone call and starts talking on the phone for the next 10 minutes. Think of activities that you can do when you have that spare time on your uh, hands, right? Divya says, uh, no, Navina says, thank you so much. I used to get anxious about it, but now I got the right strategy, giving positive strokes and incentives, make it as a game. Yes, Navina. 
Right, we move on to the next question from Divya. Now, sometimes I feel I have wasted time by sitting at home with just doing household stuff. Also, I used to feel, can I manage? Then, when I started my DCS journey, I learned the managing things on time, both my classes and household responsibilities. Hearty, hearty congratulations, Divya. This has to come from within as it has come. Yes, DCS is a catalyst. It helps you to do a lot of interaction and helps uh, you to understand uh, things. But that awakening from within, it is always, whether it is motivation, whether it is time management, when it comes from within, it is 10 times more uh, uh, effective. So you have to value yourself. You know that, know that uh, there are a lot of people uh, who when you, they ask, what work do you do? No, 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 I don't work. I'm just a housewife. So I sometimes turn to them and say, that means the whole day you laze around and sleep and watch TV, is it? No, 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 no. I've got so much to do. I don't even get free time to watch TV. Then what did you mean by saying I don't work? I'm just a housewife. When you value yourself and your work, your motivation level goes up, right? Okay. If at is there. No, Dr. Sai says for a person who is so busy but professes not to be thanks a million. Thanks, doctor. Uh, if it says, if someone has a lot of time, wait, we are getting confused. Mira says, we always feel there is very little time to do a task or in a hurry to complete it. That's overwhelming. Yes, Mira, I agree with you. The moment you start getting overwhelmed and you start getting stressed out, your time management goes for a spin. Like I told about taking time off to sharpen your axe, I told you sharpen your mental axe. When you feel that you've got too many things on hand and it's overwhelming and you're getting confused whether you will be able to complete that on time or not, that is the time to take a short, quick break and start thinking the prioritization business, including I told you about those four quadrants, have a fifth quadrant where it says, I don't want to do this. I don't think this is relevant or important. I think since I'm busy and I've got other things on hand, I will reject it. I will tell whoever is the concerned person, sorry, right now I'm not in a position to do it. You may feel bad. You may be angry with me, but I'm not going to do this particular uh, uh, task. Okay. Now, if it says, if someone has a lot of time, he can devote more of their time to improve their health, going for work, meeting other people who also have extra time and socializing with them. Also, they can meet people who need their time and support, like teaching children in some orphanages, visiting old age homes or friends, relatives who are lonely and need company. Of course, they can relax more and can enjoy which they missed in their hectic lives. Yes, Dr. Ifat has very nice point, which partly also answers Dr. Sai's uh, uh, question that there are ways and means to fill in that with useful, productive and satisfying activities. It is a constant thing. If you look back into your busy days, I'm sure there were things. I wanted to learn a musical instrument, but I never got time. Now is the time. No, I'm too old. No. You're never too old to learn a musical instrument or anything like that. Go ahead and uh, uh, do it. Okay, Dr. Shirin says, does emotional instability impact time management? Yes, Shirin, it does. If I am emotionally unstable, you know, that's, I always say, that is the wrong time to take important decisions. Maybe at that time, I can even delegate it and ask somebody else to take decisions because I'm emotionally in instable. What do I mean by emotionally unstable? Something very stressful is happening, something very unexpected. It could be an illness, it could be a financial setback, it could be a relationship issue, whatever it is. The point is that if I find myself in an emotional turmoil, that is the wrong time to take any decisions. Maybe catch up with some uh, tasks or some work which do not involve the mind, which are more of the mechanical tasks and finish them off while your mind is still settling down. If you have more important uh, uh, tasks, see if you can delegate them. See, delegation is another very important aspect of time management, which we don't realize. You can always find somebody or the other to reduce your workload. 
if you are very busy and if you find that you're getting overwhelmed it includes big bosses in offices and it also includes homemakers who feel that i have to do everything i have to cook every day i have to clean the house i have to look after this i have to get the homework done by children whatever it is no it's not so if you look carefully and if you work on it you will find that you can delegate at least some part of your work it could be to children it could be to subordinates it could be to anybody at any time maybe some elders in your family who have some uh, spare time right okay divya says many a times others don't value our time or efforts they may take it for granted yes this was exactly what was said no that people who turn up late and people who don't keep up to their uh, uh, commitments yes one thing of course is that if they are doing it on a regular basis and you have been telling them time and again that you know this is not done and if they still insist on doing it understand that they don't value your friendship or your relationship try to minimize your interaction with such uh, people it is counterproductive to go on and on and on obliging them all the uh, time like i told you about how i start parent teacher meetings even if there are 10 people sitting there if 10 o'clock is the time that has been given i am going to start at uh, 10 o'clock let everybody come at whatever time they want the same thing applies over here if there is a task which has to be done you start off with that activity don't wait for people initially they may get upset and they'll say no there was a traffic jam that's why we got held fine i appreciate i am not saying anything to you but we had decided that we'll start this activity at this time i have started that uh, uh, activity right navina says i think being practical as to how much i can do during the day and learning to say no and being okay and contented to whatever i do also not complete with uh, compete with others because each one of us has our own stamina because as you rightly said we need breaks to recharge ourselves this saying no is an excellent tool navina and all of you learn to say no when you are unnecessarily being loaded with task and that learning to say no is part of our assertiveness training which i have spoken on earlier i have a nice workbook a booklet on assertiveness uh, building assertiveness you can take a copy from banjara anytime if you want to and we will be able to help you with uh, you know uh, developing that habit where without really antagonizing people without losing your temper or without feeling guilty or bad about it you should learn how to say no yes suman this burns you out when i have to do everything that's exactly what i was telling you just now that you don't have to do everything learn to delegate learn to say no learn to prioritize learn to check out tasks which somebody else may say is important and you have to do but you don't agree i don't want to uh, do it right okay mess says i usually spend that time observing human behavior conscious effort not to look at my cell phone all of you please write this down and put it up somewhere right on top in front of you observe human behavior instead of looking at the cell phone do not restrict your world to the 6 inches of the mobile or the 17 inches of your laptop in fact this is a wonderful way of closing today's session because we are coming close to the uh, uh, time and i would like you all of you to follow what mess has said just now that is please please do not confine your world to that screen look beyond observe human behavior there is so much that we can learn from doing that and that brings us to the end of what i can i'm sorry i'm not able to answer shila's uh, question because i also follow the same di- dictum of time management we start on the dot of 11 and we close on the dot of 12 because i respect your time you have taken the trouble to come into this program and spend this hour you know with uh, uh, me and with my uh, team so i respect that and therefore at the dot of 12 i wind up i wish you once again all the best for the festive season for gandhi jayanti best of luck and jai hind